luck is going to be better than if you're handicapped. <laughs> right? And, and that's all I'm saying. Yeah, and, also, and something to remember is that you're talking about the chart, right? Mm -hmm. If your name is on the chart, that means you own the equipment. Mm -hmm. If you don't own the equipment, you're not on the chart. Okay. So, exactly. If they're leasing the equipment or if they don't own it, they're not in it. I mean, to so. me, I feel like if Bit Theory is making the actual things that we're using, what is Bit Theory be number three after? Well, see, that's the beauty of blockchain. Let, let me explain some of the technical aspects of blockchain. When, when the miners are verifying and validating all the transactions that are occurring, it requires at least a 51% consensus. Okay? So no one can manipulate that. It requires that percentage or greater. Also, no one mining pool can ever be responsible for more than 5%. So there can never be just one pool, or two pools, or three pools. Okay? Because they, they cannot contribute more than 5%. So that's why it requires a collective. So the reality is that Bitmain and Bitfury need us because we help to keep the, the balance, the equilibrium of, of the whole blockchain community. Does that make sense? So what's going to happen when we like make our own equipment and stuff? They're going to fall off the chart? Oh, no, they're not, they're not going to fall off the chart. I mean, not We're going to come up on the chart. I mean, right now, it, it may have changed. I haven't checked recently. But the last time I did check, there was about 8,000 petahash uh, computing and mining Bitcoin in the world. I think it's higher than that now, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but obviously, as, as they continue to add more power and we continue to add more power, it gives us a, a, a better leverage, a, a stronger position against any of these smaller mining pools. But what Andy was saying as far as the chart, and, and here's something because we were talking earlier. When, when people come at you and say, well, you know, we got this coin or we got that coin and, and that sort of thing, and, and, and we've got all of these mines, show me. Let's go to blockchain.info. Show me what you're mining. Show me how long you've been mining and what you've been mining. Because if you're legitimate, you're there. Right? But if they can't show you, they're not legitimate. You start asking them questions like, are, is their coin, their ICO, is it a decentralized platform or is it centralized? Does their coin require proof of work? Is it encrypted? Does it have its own blockchain to secure and protect the network? And I'll tell you, most of the people that are coming after you are just pitch men. You know, they, they don't know. And if you start to educate yourself and you start to talk to them like I'm sharing this information with you, they're going to know that you know what you're talking about. And then maybe they'll listen to you. Because you can tell them, look, I'm involved with BitClub Network because I know they're legit. Everything is documented. Everything is transparent. They've been at this for a long time. And they're one of the best at it. And they give us an opportunity to also share this with our friends and family if we want to build a team. Now, you don't have to build a team, so that's where maybe we should go next. There was a question, though, before I go. I was just wondering, where do you house all this equipment? Well, we have equipment in Iceland, Russia, um, China. Um, is it Norway now that we're also in? We're also looking for another location. Is that uh, directly controlled and operated by the club? When you say you're spread out all over the, the world, who's actually physically making sure those buildings well, those are very secure uh, centers. You take Iceland as an example. Iceland was a former NATO center, and it's the number two data center in the world. I mean, you've got Visa and MasterCard and banks that are also in this data center with their computers, as well as us with our computers. So it's a third-party company that you're managing the... Yes, okay, so it's being managed facility. by the same level of... of secure type of data operations. center. Okay. Yeah. Yes, the same level of security and, and uh, maintenance and supervision as the biggest multi-billion dollar companies so in the world. What are you actually, so you're actually renting space there and along with that comes all the services they provide and then... In Iceland we are leasing, but, but we're, we've actually invested in our own data centers and we'll continue to do that as we've invested a lot of money in power plants as well as in our own mining uh, equipment. And and then when you say you invested, so all of that is documented so that everything can be 
I mean, how do the members, can they see, can they go online and see where all these centers are and what's happening with them? Yeah, the, the, the website has, um, you know, videos that people can watch if they don't want to actually get on a plane and go there. There's quite a few people here that are in the room. Ray, I know you were there. David, you were there. Andy, you were there. Tatiana, you were there. I was there in Iceland just last month. We, we had almost 600 people that flew in from all over the world because they wanted to see. You know, they, they, they wanted to know it was real. So if you ever want to come, you know, we, we do organized tours. It's so, in June. In June. Next one's coming up in June, Andy said. And, you know, I think it's a great experience for people to actually see. Now, when you walk into these mining centers, you feel like you're walking behind a jet airplane. The noise is like deafening and the volume of, of uh, air that's moving through there because obviously the air in Iceland is frigid and the computers make a lot of, a lot of heat. So we actually suck all of the heat up through the racks and out and bring in cold air to replace it. It's, it's you know, deafening. But it's impressive. It's very impressive. So at any rate, let's let's just continue on on the uh, Bit Club Network model because as I mentioned, we started out mining Bitcoin. That's still one of our core competencies. But we also mine cryptocurrencies using GPU mining rigs, and you know those are going through a major evolution right now. And a lot of people recently, because of the value of cryptocurrencies rising. A lot of people have tried jumping into mining Bitcoin and, and mining Ethereum and other things. And what they don't realize, they're buying equipment that's outdated. New equipment is going to be released here very soon. In fact, we're building supercomputers right now that, that literally one supercomputer will replace all the computers in eight warehouses. That's how efficient and fast they are. So, I mean, if you're in the game and you're in the game to win like we are, when you start to learn and understand and, and validate and document all this as, as Andy's done and I've done, David's done and others in here have done, you'll, you'll understand that this is truly a once in a lifetime opportunity. Now, for those of you that know me, you know that I've been involved in the direct sales industry for coming up on 30 years. And I've been successful in that industry. I've built to the top of every marketing plan that, you know, companies that I've joined. And in five of the ten companies I've built to the top end, I've been the number one income earner. And I can tell you without hesitation and without any reservation whatsoever, my experience with BitClub Network is so far beyond all of those combined in terms of not just my level of income and success, but the number of other people that are making extraordinary incomes in the shortest period of time. I mean, there's nothing that I'm aware of that even comes close to how many multi-millionaires we've created and people that are worth tens of millions of dollars already in just a 12 to 24 month, 36 month period of time. I mean, I've just never seen it. And here's the reality, is it's only going to get better. In fact, we were having this conversation before everyone came in. And uh, I know that I'm digressing here, but, but I think it's really good to, to share this information because some of you, like me, might have direct sales experience. How many do? You've been involved in direct sales? Okay. Here's a question that, that I love to pose to every person that's been in direct sales because we understand that industry. We understand that we ask people to sell a product that we mark up 8, 10, 12 times and a brand that no one's ever heard of. And so that puts a price on a product higher than what similar products can be bought for. And then the industry expects them to go out and sell a product that's overpriced from a brand no one's ever heard of. Does that make sense? Is it any wonder that most people that join any direct sales company quit? Whether it's in a month or two months or three months or, you know, about nine out of ten quit in six months. Has that been your experience? That's been my experience over the last 30 years. Now, doesn't mean we can't succeed because we persevere and we look for good people that are willing to be trained. If they're teachable and coachable, we can teach them and teach them the communication skills and, and business skills and, and the other skills that they need to be successful. But at the end of the day, you've got to bring in more people than quit to get ahead. That's why I said it's a grind. Okay, now I'm not knocking or putting down the industry, but that's a reality. So here's the question I wanted to ask. 
based on either your present or past business that you built in the direct sales industry. How much would you be making or would you have made if no one that joined your business ever quit? Think about that. Let that sink in. If 9 out of 10 quit people are going to quit within a six month period of time, these are direct sales statistics from the Direct Sellers Association, not mine. But if the majority of people quit, if no one ever quit, would you have made more money? Would it have been a little bit more or a lot more? Been a lot more. Okay. Welcome to Bit Club Network. No one ever quits. No one ever gets hurt. I don't care who it is. It can be an elderly person, a young person, a single parent. It doesn't matter. They make a one-time investment, and they buy a mining contract, and it pays them every single day for the rest of their life. And when you go forward over two, three, four, five years, and you look at the Bitcoin that the mining is going to generate for you and what the projected value is going to be, that investment is so minuscule in contrast to the returns that you're going to get. Now, of course, we have historical documentation based on what those of us that have been mining are earning. But, you know, past performance doesn't always determine what future results are going to be. That's my disclaimer. But the reality is if we get bigger and even better than we already are, it could be a lot better than it is. But, but I'm okay with it the way it is. I'm tickled to death the way it is. If it gets better, more calls to celebrate. But it's already so good I can't stand it. Sometimes I feel like I have to pinch myself because I think I'm sleeping. But, but here's another thing. Not only do, do people never quit because they get paid every day for the rest of their life, there's no monthly fees, there's no annual fees, it's a one-time investment. Now, of course, they could buy more mining contracts. I did that. I started with three realized after they started mining that this really is real. And I bought seven more. And then I bought more, and I bought more, and I keep buying more. I'll never stop buying more mining contracts because I understand what the ROI is for buying the mining contracts. Now, I've amassed a lot of Bitcoin because I don't sell Bitcoin. I just stack them up. You know, not literally because they're you know, not literal coins, but, but you know what I mean. But here, here's the thing that, that I love about this. Imagine that... Not only did no one ever quit, but after the first year, they doubled their auto ship. What would that do to your income? <laughs> It'd double your income, wouldn't it? That's what happens here. You know, after just over a year, the repurchase has bought a second contract. Now, going forward, they're making twice as much money every day because they got two contracts mining instead of the one they bought. And now they got double the repurchasing power. So you know what that means? With double the repurchasing power, they get the third mining machine contract in half the time it took to get the second one. Now they got three times the repurchasing power and three times the income. And we're overriding that. It gets exciting. Yes? Question for you on the mining contracts. How does the IRS look at the, what, as a mining contract in terms of capital gains? I know you want me to answer that. But, but I'm neither an attorney nor right, a CPA. Okay. Okay. But, but I can tell you this. If you go to the IRS website, they uh, classify Bitcoin as property. Right. Now, anytime you sell property, if you have a profit, you pay a capital gains tax. Mm -hmm. They do not view it as income, but as a capital gain. But that's a conversation really you should have with your tax attorney. Probably shouldn't have even said what I said, but I already said it. So, that being said, here it gets even better. Oh, Is another question. Is there a way that you could have like, your estate control that? So they don't your estate? Come, yeah, so that way they don't come after you. Who comes after you? Like the, the government or whatever. Like I heard that you could have, like, you can manage your, um, you can have the state manage your contracts. A lot of people are doing that. They're, they're setting up their, uh, their IRAs uh -huh. and, and investing in Bitcoin and Bitcoin mining. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Yeah. Who do we go to? I mean, I know there's You know, I, I can talk to you afterwards and give okay, you a couple fantastic. that I'm aware of. Okay, thank you. I, I don't have any direct affiliation with them, but, you know, there's a few out there. So, so at any rate, I know that we're already way over time, and uh, I, I want to wrap this up. So let me wrap it up by saying that here's the other thing that excites me about BitClub Network, 
is, you know, as someone in the direct sales industry, I've earned very good money. And when you're paid in dollars, obviously you do pay tax on that. But dollars are dollars are dollars, and they keep going down in value. True or not true? Bitcoin, on the other hand, when you get paid in Bitcoin, imagine if you had gotten paid, like a lot of us did a year ago, over $100,000 worth of Bitcoin in a single month and more. What would that be worth today? Over a million dollars, right? And if it goes up to 50000 you're sure it's $5 million. So when you look at the value of Bitcoin as we move down the road, year after year after year, your net worth could grow much more rapidly than, than if you're just trying to stack up dollar bills. Much better to stack up Bitcoin. That's why I was talking about stacking up Bitcoin. Does it make sense? So, Eric, we have an opportunity here to not only make the passive residual income, but we can build a team. And if you build a team, you have the ability to override not only your own personal con uh, contracts, because many people buy, obviously, many contracts. Uh, it's up to each individual as to how many they want to start with or how many they want to add. But the reality is that uh, we don't have the time tonight to get into the compensation plan. But the person that's invited you here tonight can schedule some time with you to sit down and, and go through that compensation plan because it's an extremely lucrative compensation plan. But is there any questions anyone's dying to ask before we wrap it up? What? You, you've already gone past your limit. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Go ahead. Uh, can you talk about what the cost of a mining contract is? Sure. If, if you buy a, a, a founder's pool in, in the Bitcoin mining space, it's $3,500. There's a one-time lifetime membership fee that we pay for $99 of Bitcoin. And then the founder's package, which also gets you other benefits and bonuses like the, the, the um, coin pay shares. Because we're, we've already pre-launched this in, in Korea and Japan, and it's about to be released around the world. A global merchant platform for any business, no matter how big or how small, to accept Bitcoin and, and other legitimate cryptocurrencies for payment, okay. utilizing our, our patented smart payment app. Is 3500 the minimum? No. You could actually break the 3500 into three separate pools. You could start with... A $500 pool, that's called pool one. Okay. We have pool two, which is 1,000. And then we have pool three, which is 2,000. If you add them all up, two, one, and five, it's 3,500. So if you, you, you're saying you can accumulate those over time and eventually get to that 3,500? Is that yeah. how it works? Yeah. Or you can start there. Okay. And then some people also want to be involved in mining other crypto. So our GPU <clears throat> mining contracts are $1,000. Or you can buy a founder share, which is five GPU mining contracts for five thousand. So either one thousand or five thousand on the GPU. Does that work the same? Where you can accumulate those up to the five thousand? Yes, exactly the same. And they all uh, can be set up to automatically repurchase as well, so that you never have to reinvest any money. Okay. So well, I know a lot of us are in the Club Network. Yeah. So if they want to know how to maximize the most. You just talk to your sponsor, right? Or Absolutely. Just sit down one-on-one. -on -one yeah. Yeah, best to just sit down for a strategy session. <clears throat> Got it. You know, figure out what it is you want to achieve and when you want to achieve it, and then we put a plan together for you to, to make that happen. Anyway, thank you all for coming out tonight. We'll take one more question, and then we'll wrap yeah, it up. Uh, when I tell, have told people about the Bit Club, the first thing they do is go on the Internet, and they put Bit Club in there, and you know what comes out? all the negative stuff about Bit, bit, <coughs> bit Club. And uh, how, how do you overcome that negative, uh, you know, negativity? Well, all you can really do is just, you know, talk to people and, and try to reason with them. Unfortunately, a lot of people, they're looking for something negative. And you can find something negative about everything. I mean, I, I love Bentleys and BMWs, but you can find stuff negative on them if you look for it. And the reality is those sites, I've been to them. And the one thing that they have in common, they only talk negative about everybody. It's not just us. It's they're just down on network marketing. 
And because we have a direct sales comp plan, mm -hmm. and when you read through there, you realize they don't know what in the world they're even talking about. Because a lot of the stuff they're talking about, they are so off base because they don't know us. They haven't verified or, or double checked or triple checked like it's so easy to do. Because as I was saying, everything is documentable, everything is transparent. But unfortunately, they make their living selling negative news, negative news sales. Doesn't make it true, but unfortunately, that's who they are. Or they're selling something else. What's that? Or they're selling something else. Exactly. Their page. Yeah, exactly. Okay. That's Th those are blogs that, you know, they're, they're, they're trying to drive traffic, and negative stuff is, is what draws, you know, the most eyeballs. How do they make money on that? Uh, you've seen the ads on their sites? Oh, yeah. So the higher their traffic can, they get paid every time you go to their website. Yeah, that's how they get paid. Well, plus they sell their own deals. Yeah. So if you want to see a better deal that's real. Well, yeah, some do that. That's true. Some do that. Go over here and take a look at this link and this But some set them up as like the watchdog, but they're really not qualified. Some of them also will go to a company and they'll say for a certain amount of money, they'll take the report. what? At, at any rate, let, let's let's uh, invite Andy to come up. If you clap real loud, I just want him to share as as we conclude what his experience with Big Club Network is. Well, my experience with the uh, Big Club Network is the same experience that Michael had because Michael said one that convinced me to get into a Big Club, at, in, you know, to start with. Because at the time, when you hear about a Bitcoin, just like what you said, Doc, is that you know. Gee, Bitcoin. I was relating Bitcoin to the money game, you know, because it's not something that you get to see. It's not something you get to touch. And people exaggerate about the Bitcoins. And anything you see in the news at the time, you know, three years ago, is about negative. Kind of like I mean, life yeah. Or the uh, used car salesman <laughs> mentality, you know? And so I said, no, come on. You guys are getting into the money game? I can't do that. I got a reputation to protect type of situation. But, you know, he gave me a good, open you know, idea about the Bitcoin, and he, and so open my eyes and focus to outside of the box thinking. And once I learned about the Bitcoins, I said, gee, this is great. So we set up the schedule and said, let's go to Japan because they've been working with cryptocurrencies for several years in Japan compared to the U.S. So there's a possibility that we have a great market over there that we could open up. So we set up the schedule to go to Japan. Week before we went to Japan, we see it on a Japanese newspaper, legalizing Bitcoin in Japan. We looked at it and said, gee, somebody up there must like us. <laughs> so anyway, so that's how we got started. Some of you remember that story. So we went to Japan, and we started going back to Japan every month. And it's been a little over a year, and now I have in my organization, out of 204 monsters in the entire organization, I have a little over 50. And out of 34 mega monsters in organization, I have 12 mega monsters in my group. So it's been great. And thanks to Michael. <laughs> your, 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 your group is rocking, Andy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you, you left something out. What's that? Tell them about that new mega monster car that you've... Uh...